All right, so we're going to continue on our discussion of gene expression, which consists of the process called transcription, which copies um, DNA into, well, makes an RNA copy. And then, so RNA is the product of transcription. And then translation, which is a little more specific to only a certain kind of RNA called messenger RNA. But that is the process that makes the proteins. It's the only way that proteins are made. 99.9% .9 of the time, there's some weird stuff with viruses and such. But for us, this is these are going to be your rules of how things happen in the cell. So all RNAs are made by transcription. All right, they're all copied, although, uh, like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time. There are some viruses that can copy RNAs into other RNAs, but 99.9% .9 of the time an RNA is copied from a DNA template. So you can, you can use that as your rule. The copying in a eukaryotic cell takes place in the nucleus. Each transcription event is only copying one gene. One gene is, like I said, um, there could be 1,200 genes on a single human chromosome, so it's just one section of a chromosome that's copied. So there's a part of the chromosome that marks where the copying needs to start, and there's a part that says where this gene ends. So there's, there are start and stop signals at the beginning of the gene and at the end of the gene that helps the, um, the copying enzymes know where to start copying, where to stop copying. Only one strand of a gene is copied. So you'll recall that in DNA replication, both strands have to be copied. But in transcription, it's much simpler. Only one strand is copied. And it's copied continuously from the 5' prime end to the 3' prime end of the new strand of RNA. So only one strand of the DNA is copied. And so we call that strand the template strand. And then there's the other strand is just called the non-template strand that's not copied. And just like we learned, RNA has uracil that gets substituted for thymine. Uracil and thymine are very similar. They're both pyrimidines, um, but they have a little functional group difference on them. So uracil is what's incorporated into the new strand of RNA. And RNAs that are made by transcription can do lots of things in the cell. So for some genes, once they're copied into the RNA, the RNA sometimes is the final product for that gene. For other genes, the RNA that's made is called mRNA. And if it's an mRNA that's made from a gene, then that mRNA will move on to the next step, which is called translation. So let me get a pen here. Now we're going to talk mainly about the production of mRNAs and then the translation of mRNAs. But just to be correct, I can't get a pen. Lots of RNAs, when they are made by transcription, they go out into the cytosol and they do stuff. And that may surprise you, but this is something we've learned you know, I'd say in the last 20 years for sure. So it's not that new. But somehow it hasn't leaked into the education system <laughs> very quickly. Um, but lots of RNAs are not mRNAs. And so they do all kinds of jobs. There's short interfering RNAs, micro RNAs, long non-coding RNAs. There's different types of RNAs that do jobs. There's things called ribozymes, but all right, but for the ones that are mRNAs, they go on to the next step, which is translation. And translation is where the mRNA goes out of the nucleus. It finds the ribosome. And the ribosome is basically reading the, the secret code that's in the RNA, which is the same code that it was copied from in the DNA. It's reading that code, and it's using that information to build a protein, a polypeptide. So the ribosome itself is making the peptide bonds. Remember, the dehydration synthesis reaction between two amino acids creates a bond called the peptide bond. 
and that it creates a whole chain of amino acids called the polypeptide. And that's at the, at the ribosome. So the ribosome is the enzyme that does the dehydration synthesis that puts the amino acids together. The, the key is the mRNA tells the ribosome what order and which kind of amino acids to join together. All right, so this picture shows the whole, the whole thing just in a picture form. So in the blue at the top here, the two strands of blue, those are the double-stranded DNA. That's a gene, a section of a chromosome, but they're just zooming in on just this one section. The two strands of DNA will come apart temporarily. The enzyme called RNA polymerase will go in and copy one strand of the DNA and that one is shown in pink. And then that pink RNA will leave the nucleus. So those two strands of DNA actually come back together. So the DNA is not changed at the end of this process. The DNA opens up, a cheap copy is made of one strand, and the two strands come back together. And that can be repeated over and over. That same gene can be copied thousands of times. Now, after the RNA is made, there are some steps that we call RNA processing. So after the RNA is initially made, there are some trimming, some modifications that happen to it. Um, that's still, actually, that's still in the nucleus when that happens. But then the final, what we call the mature RNA, the mature mRNA, messenger RNA, it leaves the nucleus, so that would be this arrow down here, this gray arrow and it goes out and now, I don't know why, now it's shown as sort of a red, um, the RNA is shown right here. It's pink up here and then it's sort of red down here, but what can I do? But the ribosome clamps around the mRNA and it looks at the nucleotide sequence in the mRNA and that is used to make a protein chain, which is kind of being shown right here. So that's just the, the, the big concept. So we're going to go into a little bit more detail on the transcription, which is this top part here, this copying step. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the RNA processing, not a huge amount. And then we'll talk about the translation. Okay, the mate, how the how the um, mRNA is used by the ribosome to figure out what amino acids to, to string together. To, that's the, the dehydration synthesis part of that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about transcription. At the beginning of the gene, there's a certain section on the DNA, and this is the DNA right here now. On the DNA, and they've zoomed in just at the very beginning of a gene, there's certain, certain nucleotide sequences that are at every gene, and those are called the promoter. Now, humans, we've only been able to figure out for sure a couple of these sections. We know that there's always a T, A, T, A, A, T, and there's always a T, T, G, A, C, G. So there's probably some other sequences that have to be there, but we haven't been able to figure them out because this is complicated. But anyway, there's certain sequences that occur right before a section of DNA that needs to be copied. So all genes have these sequences in front of them. Now these are bacterial sequences. There are some promoter sequences. The letters are different for eukaryotes, but it doesn't, that's not important. So the RNA polymerase, that's the enzyme that's going to build the RNA, the new, the, the tran, what we call the transcript. Transcript is the RNA that's produced by transcription, by copying a gene. And so there are proteins that attach to the promoter, and then there's the RNA polymerase that attaches to the promoter. It's kind of like, um, I always think of it as sort of the launch pad for NASA, where they have to construct some supporting things before the, to hold the um, rocket in place, and then the rocket eventually launches. So the RNA polymerase is kind of like the rocket, and these other proteins are going to build on, around it to hold it in place, and then the polymerase is going to launch forward and copy the gene. 
So this is all set up for that process. So the promoter is where these different proteins have to be laid down. So here's a picture. Here, here's the promoter. This is on the DNA here. So you have this section here. Here's TA, TA, A. And then um, you have these different proteins shown as these little ovals. You don't have to memorize all of them. They're called transcription factors. And transcription factors lay down on the promoter and that tells the RNA polymerase, okay, I need to go here. So once all the transcription factors are laid down on the promoter of a gene, the RNA polymerase will come, but we still haven't copied anything yet. We've just attracted the RNA polymerase to the right spot for, any, for a gene that needs to be expressed. All right, so once the RNA polymerase moves forward, and the RNA polymerase is this big orange circle, but as it moves along, what it does is it separates the two strands of template of uh, DNA. One of them is called the template. Whichever one is being copied is arbitrarily named the template strand. The one that's not being copied is the non-template. It's always the same strand. Like if this gene encodes, you know, protein Q, then every time this gene is expressed, it's always going to be this bottom strand that's copied. So each gene has a certain strand that's the template, and then the other strand is just called non-template. So the, the template strand is copied into RNA, but what you'll notice about the RNA, which is shown in pink here, if you notice it, what did they do here? This is a typo. RNA doesn't have T. That's a U, that's a U, that's a U. Maybe they updated it in the newest edition of the book, but I got this from the first eh, first or second edition. Anyway, those should be U's. So the, the, um, if you look at the RNA, it starts with A, U, G, C, C, G, which is complementary to the DNA part here. But if you look at the non-template strand, it's A, T, G, C, C, G. So what you notice is that the non-template strand and the RNA copy both of them are complementary to the template strand, which means they are virtually the same as each other. So the non-template strand looks exactly the same as the RNA copy, except a U will be substituted where, anywhere where in the RNA where there's a T in the DNA. So that's always kind of interesting. So once the RNA polymerase, it starts at the promoter, it copies till it gets to a, a section of the gene called the terminator. And there's a lot of details about the terminator that we don't care about. But what happens when it's just, it's just like the promoter, it's a certain sequence of nucleotides in the DNA and it tells the RNA polymerase to stop. So there's a, a signal in the DNA that tells the RNA polymerase where to start and there's a signal that tells it where to stop. It's not copying the whole chromosome. This is not replication. This is just copying one gene, one strand, from the promoter to the terminator. At that point, the RNA product is released, the RNA polymerase enzyme is released, and the two strands of DNA come back together as if nothing had ever happened. They are not affected. The DNA is not affected by the transcription process. So the transcription can keep happening on that same gene over and over again. It doesn't, doesn't hurt anything or change anything. Now, after the RNA is released, this picture is showing the RNA. Sometimes we call the initial product of the transcription, we call it the primary transcript, or sometimes it's called the pre-RNA, or pre-mRNA, since we're going to focus on mRNA specifically. And that implies that something needs to happen to it to get it ready for the next step, which is translation. And that's called processing, RNA processing. That's not a very specific term. It just means something's going to happen, RNA processing. It just means trimming and adding things on. And we've talked about proteins being processed in the Golgi. This RNA processing happens in the nucleus. 
But you remember that proteins are processed in the Golgi, right? Things are trimmed off, things are added on, we say modification. So it's, it's a similar concept. In the nucleus, once the RNA is made by transcription, then there's some trimming and some additions that are added. So what's added is what's called the five prime cap. That's on the five prime end of the RNA because the RNA is made from five prime to three prime. The, new, the RNA is the new strand. So at the five prime end, there's something called the cap that's added. At the three prime end, there's a long chain of A nucleotides added. So that's the three prime poly A tail. So there's a cap and a tail. We think that that helps make the RNA a little more stable, although like I said, it's not, still not very stable. And then there are, in some genes, there are little junk sequences called introns. You can think of them as interruptions. And the introns have to be cut out. And so the other sections called exons, which are expressed sequences, sequences that need to be expressed, those are left in, which is kind of counterintuitive. Because if you look at it, X and N, in you would think maybe those need to be left in. But no, they're interruptions. So you need to remove the interruptions. Intron really stands for intervening sequence, but think interrupting sequence. And the exons stay in because those are the sequences that need to be expressed. So this, those terms I don't think are very intuitive. So you really need to pay attention. The exons are what stay in. The introns are removed. And so the final RNA, sometimes called the mature RNA, or the mature transcript. It's weird because we don't call, the pre-mRNA is never called the immature transcript, but I guess it, it could be, but it's, we don't use that term. But the final product, the mRNA, is called the mature transcript. So that one is ready then for the next stage, which is translation. So this would be specifically for mRNA. Other types of RNAs that aren't mRNAs do have processing, but it wouldn't be these exact steps. They would be other kinds of trimming and such. So we're going to focus on the mRNAs, because those are the ones that go on to the next part of gene expression, which is called translation. So I've covered a little bit about the details of transcription, a little bit about the processing, and in the next segment we'll look at translation. We're going to kind of keep, try to keep it pretty simple and straightforward, and your, your goal is to keep it straight. <laughs> Make sure you know what each thing does and what it produces.